This is part two of the video solution to this particular example. And in this video, I'm going to focus on part B, finding the dimension of this set W, or this subspace of the 2 by 2 matrices. Uh, so to do this, I, I want to start out by describing W the same way I started out that last video. Uh, so a symmetric 2 by 2 matrix. So you can have anything along the diagonal. And I'm going to change this to C. I was using D in the previous video, but I think I like C better. Uh, if it's symmetric, then these entries need to match. So I'm going to put Bs in both of these entries. Uh, because if it's symmetric, then these entries um, that are mirror images across the uh, main diagonal need to match there. Uh, and so this is where A, B, and C are any real numbers. Uh, now, <clears throat> I did this in the last video, but so this means uh, that we could express any matrix in W as a linear combination of this matrix, B times this matrix, C times 0, 0, 0, 1, uh, which is the span of, of those. This is the set of all linear combinations of those matrices. So I'm just going to put little quotations here. Oops. The span of those matrices. Now remember that the dimension of W is the number of vectors in uh, any basis of W. So to find the dimension, uh, we need to find a basis for W. Now we have a spanning set. So remember, a basis is a collection of vectors that span the set, which, OK, we've, we've satisfied that condition, that are linearly independent. So that's what we need to check on. Um, are these, we call them vectors in the, in the more general sense, but are these matrices linearly independent? So that's the question that we need to answer now. I'm going to abbreviate here so you're not spending all your time watching me write. OK, so remember to uh, determine whether a collection of vectors is linearly independent, we need to look at the solutions to this equation. If we have some scalar x1, or I'm going to use a again, times the first vector, plus some scalar, let's say, b times the second matrix, plus some other scalar, let's say C, times the third matrix. If this is equal to the zero vector, which in this case would be the two by two matrix, matrix whose entries are all zero, is there a non-trivial solution to this equation? That's what we need to ask ourselves. If there is a uh, non-trivial solution, then the vectors are linearly dependent. If the only solution to this is uh, to have all the scalars equal to zero, then they're linearly independent. Uh, OK, so if we do this addition here, combine this to a single matrix, we're back in that, um, we're back in this form. And we have this equal to the zero vector. So what I've done in this step is actually combine all of these uh, matrices, put together that linear combination. And now matching up corresponding entries. So I have A here, I have 0 here, so A must be 0. I have B here, I have 0 here, so B must be 0. And I have C here, I have 0 here, so C must be 0. So, so we've just shown that the only solution to that equation up above is the trivial solution. And since we only have the trivial solution to that equation, the vectors are linearly independent. Uh, since now we know that those vectors are linearly independent, then we know that, uh, well, I guess I'll write it. We know that this set of vectors, which let me slide this so you can see where that's coming from. So these vectors will form a basis for W, and so W has dimension 3.
So this is a basis for W. And so the dimension of W is 3.